The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this May 2019 edition of the Wyoming Women's Business Center's webinar series. Today's presentation is getting started with QuickBooks. Uh, my name is Waldo Smith, and I'll be your moderator today. Uh, if you'll notice in the GoToWebinar control panel on the right side of your screen or on the side, uh, there is a box called a question box and also a chat panel. If you have questions or comments during the presentation, you can enter them in those boxes. I will be monitoring those and then I will pass the, the uh, questions and comments on to our presenters. This webinar is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel. You can go to YouTube and enter Wyoming Women's Business Center. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and check out the other webinars that are already there. You can also visit our website at www.wyomingwomen.org and look for us on Facebook. Immediately following this presentation, a survey will launch on your browser. We ask that you please complete the survey as this provides us input. Uh, we can then turn around and pass on to our funding partners. It also provides us information as to topics for future webinars. All of the participants are muted to minimize background noise. So again, use the question or the chat boxes uh, to relay information to us. And then I'm going to have uh, Christine Langley, our business counselor at the Wyoming Women's Business Center do the introduction of our speaker. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Christine. All right, thanks Waldo. Welcome everybody to the Wyoming Women's Business Center webinar series. Today's agenda, I'm just gonna cover quickly with you what the WWBC is um, and how we can service. And then we'll jump right into getting started with QuickBooks and we'll end with a Q and A. So the mission of the WWBC is promoting economic equality in Wyoming through successful business ownership. And we are a nonprofit organization that assists individuals who wanna start or expand small businesses specifically in the state of Wyoming. And so we do this through three different programs. The first is business counseling. Um, and essentially our business counseling is for all people um, that have small businesses in the state of Wyoming. And our primary job is to coach and motivate, inspire you. Um, hopefully teach you some things along the way in order to make business and entrepreneurship a little less isolating. We also do networking and educational opportunities around the state, um, and we also do online trainings like the online webinar that we're hosting today. And then finally, we have a microloan program. Our microloan program assists individuals that need capital, and we do microloans anywhere between $500 and $50,000 to help fund business startups or existing business expansions. And so if you want more information on that, you can contact Waldo and we'll have all of our contact information at the end of this webinar. So again, um, our agenda today is getting started with QuickBooks. And so I want to introduce you to our speaker who is Cade Rentals, Reynolds. Sorry about that, Cade. Um, Cade's a licensed CPA in the state of Wyoming and he's also a certified QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor. And so in December of 2018, Cade and Derek um, Campbell actually co-founded Capital Clarity it, right here in Laramie, which is where we're headquartered as well. And they have an accounting firm that specializes in full service accounting solutions, tax planning and preparation, as well as advising clients on their financials. And so Cade grew up on various ranches. And so his favorite industry to work um, with through, through accounting is agriculture, but he assures us that he enjoys working with all small businesses. So I think everybody that is represented here today will enjoy getting to know Cade a little bit. So Cade, I will turn it over to you. All right. Well, thank, thanks to the Wyoming Women's Business Center and Christine and um, Waldo for having me as a speaker today. We're gonna touch base and we're gonna start with the basics of QuickBooks and get started, so. I wanna kinda do an overview of, of what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna hit the high notes of desktop versus online program. That's a talking piece with a lot of small businesses anymore. Cover a little bit of initial setup. We'll do that in online version more, as well as chart of accounts. We'll talk about sales and expenses. 
as well as the banking and the reconciliations, and then touch base a little bit on the reports towards the end. So as, as a business owner and as a CPA, I like to kind of ask this question, where, what do you want to answer with your accounting process? And some people, you know, they just want to file their tax return. And I think the accounting should be a tool to, to better your business, to use it to say, hey, am I making money? Am I not? Is there a way to, way to do things differently and kind of use it not necessarily as compliance tool, as a, a business tool? And that's where I, I think that's an important thing to, to think about as you start to do accounting processes. I think QuickBooks is a, a good, good program that helps to make simplify the accounting processes also. So that kind of, that's what the, I would like people to think about. So with desktop, so there's a few differences here. I Online versus desktop. Desktop, the, the biggest thing, it's, it's on the computer that it's installed to, whereas online is cloud-based. And that's, that's kind of the biggest differences. Now I, I wanted to focus this presentation towards online more because I think that that's where bookkeeping is gonna go in the future. I think that QuickBooks is starting to slowly phase out desktop in a way. And I think that five years from now that it's all gonna be online. So I think that that's, that's why I wanted to focus this towards the online side. So when you when you initially set up your your online account, you're gonna be you're gonna go through the the steps online, and you're gonna you you log in, and you're gonna you'll get your first login. So then, once you're in there, it's important to start thinking about what what do I need to set up. So with that, I always like to start up here in the the top right corner in the gear icon, and as you'll see on the next slide, there's this will open up this box here. There's accounts and settings, all the manage users is important. Manage users that's below account settings is important for if you wanted to invite your accountant. There's this this gear icon will give you a lot of settings, but one of the biggest one is accounts and settings. So within that, it'll look like this screen here. So in this screen here, there's all the different things on the side, company usage, sales, expenses, advance. One of the biggest ones to set up is, is the company though. And then sales, like we, there's what, what you do in there is there's some settings for invoices and stuff like that. But I always like to just kind of work through all these, but start with the company. And as you go to edit it, you would just select the, the pencil on the right hand side of here. And then we're in the red box there. And then you'll select that and then it'll look like the next screen here where you would take and you would you'd be able to input your name of your company and put the EIN in and all that kind of stuff and a lot of this stuff seems tedious I mean to go put an EIN in or anything like that but it's worth it if you do the, the setup right at the at the beginning it'll just be it'll be easier throughout if you have the EIN in there for instance you'll be able to file your 1099s easily and that kind of stuff like that. So that's why I think that the beginning setup is important. So we're going to move to the chart of accounts. And I think I wanted to talk about chart of accounts because it's so important. It's the structure of all of your, your accounting processes. So this is the way it's going to look on all your reports that you print. It's going to be the way it looks throughout the whole QuickBooks, it's gonna be what you what you have. It's the backbone of it, I guess. So chart of accounts is important in regards to if you if you are always creating new categories that you're gonna be coding stuff through, it makes it harder to compare. So if you can get a good good base on it, then it's gonna be easier down the road. So with that, to to get into the chart of accounts in online version, you would do it on the the right hand side there and then you'd select that the green icon in the middle and then it'll look like this screen here now this screen here you can see it has the accounts listed out if you wanted to ever go change the setting you could add account numbers anything like that we can also edit each one of these accounts as we go but i think the, the it's more important probably to 
to take and look and say, what is the chart of account? So with that, let's go to the, to the next slide and let's talk about that a little bit, the understanding it. So there's, there's a lot of different areas within here. There's assets, liabilities. So this is the balance sheet side, assets, liabilities, and equity. Assets, you got, and that's anything you own. So anything of value in a way. You have cash, you have accounts receivable, you have inventory. So accounts receivable isn't necessarily tangible because it's for work that you, you previously did. Cash, it's not technically tangible because it's sitting in the bank. But then you got some tangible assets like inventories that might be in a back warehouse or property plant equipment. You might have some machinery sitting out in the lot. Anything like that that is an asset to your business. Well, that's going to go into the assets part of the chart of accounts. Liabilities would be any any debt that you have on those assets or any any anything that you owe. So maybe along the way as you go in your business here, you're, you're charging stuff to a credit card. Well, that's that's increasing that liability on that at that point in time. So it's all it's all balanced. Their accounts payable. Maybe you're you're financing stuff down down the road at some at the at your vendors and you're financing stuff there and that grows that well notes payable maybe you you had the you took out a note to buy that that machinery so the net of that though is your equity and this is i like equity you want it to be positive and you want it to be you want to be able to see that because the net is that's kind of what your company is worth at the end of the day or your your worth in the company, so that's important. Distributions, contributions, those are a, a part of equity, and I think this I wanted to point those out in this presentation because distributions that's money that if if you ever pay something through your business that was really for personal, that's where it needs to be coded. I find that a lot of clients that's an easy area to mess up, and then contributions as well. So sometimes you'll see where money put into the business from an owner put into the business goes in through income. And it's not really technically income to the business because it's money put in by the owner. So that's why I wanted to highlight those two areas underneath the equity. And I think that's important. But most of, most small, a lot of small businesses are, are most mostly profit and loss oriented, which we'll see on the, the next slide. And not a lot of balance sheet act or not as much balance sheet activity. So this is where you'll you'll kind of most of what you do in your QuickBooks, this is where it'll be focused. Now, with this, we got two different areas of, of revenue. So say you have a, a landscaping business and they are selling lawn mowing services. Well, lawn mowing services would technically speaking be a service that they're providing so that's service revenue now maybe this landscaping business also has they're selling brick pavers and they're selling some flowers and some trees and all that kind of stuff that could be in their product division so i think i think as you set up your your chart of accounts it's kind of important to to split these out as much as you can just in regards to it helps you make a, a business decision down the road is this services that I'm providing, are we making money on that that part of it or are we making more money on the sales part of it? Same goes with expenses. Administrative expenses, you're going to have those no matter what within a business. Whereas operating expenses, can we trim these operating expenses for the services we provided it? Or can we trim operating expenses for sales of products? Anything like that. So that's why I think if you can kind of define your chart of accounts and make that really, really drill drill down into it and make it a good structure from the beginning, it'll make your accounting processes easy year throughout. So, and then rev your profit and loss, it'll show your revenues less your expenses, and then whatever the end of it is, we'll end up closing it back into your balance sheet side, which is a whole another accounting process that we. I'm not going to necessarily touch on today. So, in the chart of accounts, so to get to this into in QuickBooks Online, you're going to go 
over to the left hand side and you select on accounting and in accounting you're gonna you're gonna select that and then there's there's multiple ways to to actually edit the chart of accounts through here so you can do you can use the little pencil icon that i put the red box around or you can put use the view register and if, if you use the view register on the on the right hand side of that there's a, a drop down there and you can use that and that it would have edit and that would allow you to see the difference in the the it allows you to edit the chart of accounts both of, of which are acceptable ways it just depends on what way you want to go and i feel like quickbooks in in general i mean desktop or online is pretty pretty good in that regard to allow you to really do whatever you it has multiple ways to do multiple different or the same thing so that either way on that you select one of those and then then you'll be able to edit your chart of accounts so the the picture here on the the left side that's if you were to use the drop down and that'll have you edit the specific the specific account so within that you could go in and you could you could change the the bank account or change it from bank to maybe accounts receivable and then the detail type that's that's saying what it is it may in this case it's a bank and then maybe there's there's a savings account and then name maybe you want to name it bank number one checking account or you can change that and then also if you're to dive into here you could also do sub accounts within here which would be if you wanted all your bank accounts under one account and then the all the smaller ones as details to those that would be how you would do that you'd use that sub account feature there and then the other screen on the the right hand side here it would be used for if you were to take in maybe you wanted to it's it shows all the accounts and allows you to edit all the accounts at once i guess and set it on an individual basis but it doesn't allow you as much opportunity for doing the a sub account or something like that or changing a detail type so the the next thing i want to wanted to touch on is sales and this is i mean it's both desktop and online version this is something that you're going to be doing in your business and and the same same principles apply to both of them in a lot of ways where this is oriented to to desk or online version you would be this is specific more spe specified to that but the all so if you were to go to the left side of your online version there's going to be sales over there and you'd be able to select that and then there's going to be all these tabs well what all these tabs that you can select on mean so all sales is this it shows the progress of everything that's been built if it's been collected all the above there so I, I like to look at that daily almost in my business just because I can see, hey, I still am waiting for collections here. I'm, I have this outstanding. And it's just kind of a high level overview that's really, I mean, it's a quick high level overview. And that's that's sometimes what you really want. So invoices, it's that whole area. That's if you were to do, say you were to do sales or a product, sales or service, and you were to wait and you were going to, collect on it later so you'd invoice for that so that tab is where you do all that invoicing from customers tab i think this is a area that can provide good value to to accounting records is by making sure that all the customers are complete make sure that you have the the address for them make sure you have the name instead of some people though you'll see a set of set of quickbooks sometimes and i feel like you might just put in there the say the landscaping company it's sales of sales of prod or service i mean so you're you're selling lawn mowing services well maybe one customer is 90 percent of the lawn mowing service it'd be nice to know that at that point in time so that's why i think if you if you take the time to, to set up the customers it, it can provide value down the road in your accounting accounting work so products and services now what this is it be if the landscaping company is selling different different products so they're selling bricks and they're selling gravel and they're selling some dirt 
and they're selling trees, well, all these might be landscaping landscaping products, and you'd want all that to be in landscaping landscaping products income. So you'd you'd create these, and then they would all roll into that same account, and it it helps with the chart of accounts to go back to it helps to make sure that they don't get too, too convoluted and that there's not a million different accounts for all these little different deals when some of it is this is similar in nature and you could always pull the detail from behind so that's kind of a, a high level on on the different items or what this stuff means within the sales tab of the online version here we we show an invoice here on the on the left so this is this is i want to this is an area that's easy to to have errors in within quickbooks online so in this one we have an invoice that's for work that was performed and then when i'm collecting on it later is the business now sales receipts is when you are collecting it right away so maybe in our fictitious landscaping company here they have a yard and they some some family comes down and they want to buy a tree so they sell them a tree they get cash right away well that would be sales sales receipts at that point in time so the the sales receipts is important because it's easier to make a sales receipt than to invoice it do the collection on it even though the cuz the collection already happened at that point in time and that that difference is it it just saves some work and it also that difference right there is somewhere that I've seen errors before. People will create an invoice which creates income to them, and then they'll they'll make a sales receipt, and then they'll create the same income even though it's attributable to the same tree that was sold. So that's a an area that can have errors. So that's why it's important to kind of show the difference there. So in QuickBooks Online, to to do a sales receipt you're going to go over to your sales tab on the on the left and right here at the top you can you can kind of see all those the overview the all sales all all that stuff that we were we were, we just discussed and then to make a sales receipt though you're going to go over here to new transaction and you'll do the drop down and then there would be a a menu sales receipt and you select that which will show us on the next screen so in the next screen, you're gonna two ways that customer, if you already had them added, you're gonna you're gonna find them in the drop down just by typing it in. It'll hopefully hopefully you have their email, their billing address, all that stuff within there. And then you're gonna you're gonna put it into undeposited funds, which we'll talk more about that. But it's important to to always put it there because it is that's like Consider undeposited funds as your cash drawer. So it's money that you have in your hands, but you, it's money that's necessarily not in the bank yet. So I would always recommend depositing sales receipts or if you receive money on invoice to undeposited funds. And then down here, then you could list out your product service, type that in, description, quantity, rates, all that. And then you would go ahead and you would you can print the receipt for the customer. You can email the receipt to the customer depending on what, what method they prefer. And you could also, at that point in time, and then that kind of takes care of that. The nice thing about emailing it, is you don't have to, to print the paper. So that's, that's kind of a sales receipt overview. Sales invoice, the, the difference in that is that, again, it's the money that I did the work for, I, I I already gave them the products for that we're going to collect at a later date. So in this re screen, it'll show you, this is kind of a good overview also. It's this in the invoices tab, but you can see up top, top on this in this fictitious company that there's $1,500 of overdue invoices and $3,700 of invoices that aren't due yet. And then it shows you the not deposited, so that's two thousand dollars that's sitting in undeposited funds that's ready to go to the bank at some point in time, and then deposited money. There's that's what you have deposited in the bank in the last month. So that's kind of a, I I think it's kind of a cool cool overview kind of tab. 
But then down below, then you have all your, your invoices that have been created. Now, you can also monitor it from there. Now, if you were to go to a new invoice, though, on the, the right-hand side, so I'm going to kind of walk you through if you were to create a new invoice in this, in this QuickBooks file. So you you just click on that, and then it would bring up this screen here. So again, customer, you just do that. You hope you want to have as much information as you can. Email is is nice with QuickBooks Online because you can email the invoice to the to the customer. So say you can down here on the the right hand side, you can see where I have save and send. So you have that, and then it has um, also a feature where you can do save and share links so you can just put a link say you're typing an existing email or something you can add a link there and you can send it through that method there and also you can print and preview it you can print it do all those features there the other and that that's kind of one of the the big things with the invoicing so that's how you would create an invoice through this screen here so the next step as a business owner, you you hope you can you get collection on these invoices. So one of the 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 customer sends you remits you a check or customer pays you in cash or however it works, this is kind of the next process in QuickBooks that they can kind of have a, a major has flaws in it and and you can kind of mess up. And again, it's similar to the sales receipt. So you always want to go into undeposited funds and you always want to make sure that you verify the the customer that you're applying the the payment to. We had a a client the other day and it was just a it was a weird error and it was the same amount and everything and it happened where it got deposited to the to the wrong person but then it took a little bit of work to go to go fix it. So sometimes it's it's worth just slowing down and just making sure that you apply it to the correct invoice and it makes your records more clean at the end of the day. So, in sales, if you're gonna receive a payment, you're gonna go in here and you can do a couple different methods here. You can go, so in all sales, as you can see, there's all the stuff that, that's that been outstanding in this company. So, you can do receive payment for, for each each one of these individual items. You can select that or you can do Select up there at the new transaction and do the do the drop down and select payment. And if you either way, it'll get you to the same spot again. QuickBooks has made it easier for us. And and on the next screen, there it'll show you the receiving of the invoice. It should. Are you, is everybody there? There, yes. yes. Thank you, Christine. So, receive payment. Customer is, in this case, we're going to receive it from the Red Rock Diner. And they, we have two invoices outstanding. So, maybe they paid us, there's there's one for $156, one for $70. At, at that point in time, we have $226 outstanding. So. If they were to pay me only 156, I would just put in 156 up there in the amount received, check invoice 1024, and that would be it. I'd make sure all the, the payment method up in the left-hand side was created properly, again, on undeposited funds. Now, if I was to receive the, the full two, $226, I would put that in, check both of these invoices, and then it would it would pay both of those or record it in the QuickBooks that both of those invoices have been paid. And that's the that's the biggest thing there. And then we'll show you here how, how to make the actual deposit and record that through the QuickBooks. So making the deposit is it's important in regards to to how you do this. So when you go to make the deposit, it's gonna that undeposited funds account that we've talked about. It's going to pull it out of the undeposited funds, and it's going to move it over into the the actual bank account. So it's it's that intermediary account undeposited funds will decrease, and then now the 
the bank balance will actually increase. So to make a deposit, you're going to, in QuickBooks, you go up here to the up top and there's a little plus symbol and it spins after you click on it. So that's why it looks like an X right now. But you would click on that and then within there you see bank deposit. And if you select that, then it'll show you the next screen within QuickBooks and then that will show you the so you deposit it to your checking or your savings or whatever account you're putting it into so it's important to make sure it goes into the right account because if if not you'll have issues with reconciliation and then the second thing make the date and then this can be multiple people so if you have maybe you collected from me and you collected from customer A, B, C, D, all of the above in one day. So you would go ahead and you would just select everybody that you receive money from on the left-hand side that you wanted to, to deposit at that day or at that transaction. You would select those and then you would hit save and, save and close. There in the save and new drop down, you could you would do the, on the next to save and close there, you do the drop down and save and close. So that kind of that wrapped up sales and kind of some of the, the functionality in, in in QuickBooks Online for sales. Like I said, it'd be similar in in QuickBooks Desktop. It's same same kind of features. It's just important to just kind of understand what you what you want to do there. So with that, let's let's move on to some expenses. So the expenses tab is everything that you're you're spending money on so any transaction that goes through this is going to be it can be it'll be always going through the expenses tab it's going to be through, either through a bill an expense or a check so to talk about the the differences on those so a bills would be if i was going to pay something down the road so if if the landscaping fictitious landscaping company went and bought trees from from the tree farm they're going to take and they're going to get an invoice from it the tree farm would have just did the sales process that we just went through and they would have sent an invoice over and then we would have entered a bill well at that point in time the bill would have been you can enter it and then you'd pay it later so or when it's due so it's important to enter it and then you can you can pay it down the road or when before it's due but Expense would be, say, an employee from the landscaping company went to lunch that day and ran ran the lunch on the credit card. Well, that transaction has already, already happened, so you're better just to in, input that as an expense and because it's already been paid for, you might as well just code it to the books at that point in time, and that makes that, that feature easier. So, and then a check, that would be an instance, say, you want to just, you get the bill in the mail, and then you just want to pay it right away. You would just you'd use the check feature, and instead of entering the bill and then paying right in the check later, you just skip the entering the bill, write the check, mail it off at that point in time. So that's kind of the, the difference in the, those three. Again, this is if you have the if in QuickBooks Online, you'll have the expense tab on the on the left, and then there'll be two two expense tab or expenses and vendors. So Vendors, again, just kind of like customers. This is who who you're buying from instead of who you're who you're who you're buying from instead of who you're purchasing from. But it's good to put all the information in for those just because it's easier to it's better accounting data and the fact that you can make decisions on your business. You can say, hey, I'm buying eighty percent of my my supplies from one company. Is there any way that I can maybe talk them into giving me a discount because I'm doing so much there or anything like that. It's easier to see trends and that kind of stuff. So that's why why I always like to make sure we input the vendor information properly and thoroughly. So the next thing I want to kind of walk through is in the vendors tab, how to how do you go input the vendor information? So in here, you Again, you can see the expenses on the left-hand side of the, the QuickBooks. There is vendors, though, and then expenses up top. So you can select on the vendor, and at that point in time, you would 
you can see all your existing vendors. So this, this company has all these vendors throughout it. Now, if I wanted a new one, I would go up to the, the right hand side and I would select new vendor. And then from, I would just pick on that and then it'll bring up another screen that will show, allow you to input the new vendor's information. So you go in and put the company name, you put how you want it displayed, you put the email in, you put the phone number, address, all of that stuff, what kind of terms they generally give you, because then, or you, you generally give them, so then when you go to bill them, it'll be automatic for that customer. Say one customer might do, they might pay monthly, and the other customer, you, 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 you make sure they pay you every 15 days or whatever it might be. You can, you can designate those terms in that, and then at that point in time, you can just save the vendor. So now they're they're within there and that step is taken care of. So it's, it, it seems kind of tedious, but then once you have the work done on that the first time, it's done forever at that point in time, as long as that vendor is outstanding. So one other thing I should have mentioned, mentioned in vendors, and it's kind of important, is you can always go, that, that original vendor screen we, we looked at, it has has all the lists, you can deactivate these too. So it's kind of nice to, to go through that vendor list as a business, maybe, I don't know, six months every year and say, however you often you like and say, hey, I don't do business with this person anymore or let's just deactivate them so I don't have any errors in making sure that I'm paying the right person at that point in time or, and it'll deactivate them in the system and then you would have to reactivate them in order to take in and pay any money to them or re-add them at that point in time. But that's that's kind of an interesting side that could be potentially good to do in QuickBooks. I think it's an area that's pretty messy in a lot of them. So that that takes that. But now let's let's go on and we'll we'll talk about some some expenses. So again, expenses and bills. So bills, we talked about this. This is if we if we were just to pay pay the bill directly. So we we go or if we were to pay it and and pay it later. So bills, you could go in there and you're going to do new transaction, you're going to enter a bill at that point in time. And then you put in all the information what it was for, you put the category in this scenario that the fictitious company bought some hamburgers, got a bill for it, they're going to pay for it down the road. The other cool thing in here I'd like to point out is down here, the attachments, you can take and upload the receipt for it. So that's always kind of nice, especially on, more on the tax side than the compliance or the, the tax compliance side. If you ever came under audit or something, the receipt could just be saved in into your QuickBooks. So that's kind of a, an interesting feature that I, I would like to point out there. So, but other than that, that's how you'd enter a, enter a bill, you'd hit save and close and, and then that's that's that that feature to then go to pay it you would go in you'd be in your expenses tab still and then you would just do print you could do pay bills from this drop down next to print checks and you just do pay bills it's going to give you a list of it'll show you on the, the next screen but it'll give you a list of the bills that you're going to pay so in this example we're going to pay for those two hamburgers so i we check that and then at that point in time, you would do save and print. It, it'll allow you to put in your check number up above and print the check out at that point in time before you, so you can mail it off and, and, and send it to to the, the vendor you purchased the goods from at that point in time. So that's, it's kind of simple to, to pay the, the actual, cut the check after you put the bill in there. So if you're gonna just do an expense, this would be, if if you're just gonna, but I gave the credit card example earlier. So I, I bought lunch, you would just do new transaction, you would do drop down, you would do create, and then it'll give you an option to do expense. And then you would go through with entering the expense in this screen here. It would be through the, through the you put checking account, how do you pay it? Well, maybe you did pay it on the credit card. So you'd wanna cha change the payment account. Who did you pay it to? You'd want to put that in and then 
attachments. Again, if you wanted to upload that receipt, you could, and then save and close. That expense is now taken care of at that point in time. Over here, a check. It's a similar thing. You just do the, the drop down here, and you would select check instead of bill or check instead of expense. And again, you're going to put in the, the payee information because that'll that'll print on the check and then whatever you you can go down here and you're going to check number you'd want to put it'll it'll decide when you when you go to print it it'll pick the automatic one in the series in the series and then category you can just put it in what it was for you may verify the total at that point in time if if you wanted that attachment and then you can either do print check or you can save and print later depends on what you're doing but in this scenario most of the times you would do print check and then that kind of takes care of if you're to do a check. Again, same scenario in the expenses. You, if you were to do a, print the check later, you could always come back in here, select whatever check you wanted to print, and then hit print checks within the, there. And that check would then be printed, and you'd be done with that transaction at that point in time. The that, that kind of wraps up expenses we're gonna now we're gonna talk about the bank transaction feed and this is one of the i didn't talk about it on the differences but this is one of the difference in online and desktop if you want to do this in desktop you got to pay extra money for it so the online version has this feature though within it so and it's a it's pretty nice feature it helps with the bookkeeping it just makes the bookkeeping a little bit more clean and <clears throat> excuse me um it allows you to to do a different few features so what the the bank transaction feed does you connect well i'll show you what we're gonna we'll talk about connecting the account in a minute but you connect your bank account to it so it automatically so as a, a transaction clears through through the bank in your account so say you go make a deposit and that clears the bank then at that point in time as quickbooks updates it every day it'll pull in that transaction so that makes the bookkeeping nice in regards to you'll never all the transactions will always be in this bank feed now if you went and entered the expense or the deposit already quickbooks will then allow you to match them or if you went and did a transfer already between maybe you did a transfer would happen and we'll i'll show you this feature too in a, in a little bit but the transfer would be if you had a, a credit card expense and you went or a, a bank, your a checking account, and you wanted to go pay a credit card account. Well, that transfer at that point in time would be made, and then then you'd re, you'd record the transfer, and it would already recognize that that transfer is previously made, and you'd just select that. So, with that, we'll we'll talk about connecting the bank accounts. In this, you got. So in the in the main banking screen, which you'll see it on the next, I'll point it out on the next slide. But there's a up top. There's a way to add it, and it's up in an update thing on the top right corner. And you can so you'll go in there, and this is what the screen that you're gonna get. So then you'll type in two important things to to do here. You'll have to log into your online banking. So you log into wherever you're banking, and then. You're going to come in here and then you're going to type in your bank so bank number one or in this example maybe you want to connect your your wells fargo bank so you're going to select type in wells fargo pick the and it'll allow you to pick the the bank that you want from wells fargo and then at that point in time then it'll prompt you through and you'll log into your banking online banking from here and then it'll link those two together now one thing to point out quickbooks from QuickBooks, you can't actually get into the bank account to ever do anything, but you can all, always see um, the transactions that flow through the bank account. So in this this screen here is the so this checking account in this example company has been been linked to the QuickBooks. So the nice thing about that is now we have all these transactions that went through the bank in here. So this is kind of like a, a high level check to see if I got everything recorded through my sales and my expenses. So in this, like in the top one, books, 
that books by Bessie on category. It, so it automatically, sometimes it'll pick a category, even though it's not necessarily the right one. And then it says received $55. So that was money that was received. And you could, you're going to go code this one because QuickBooks did not recognize that it matched. Like down below, you can see that the two below matched and you can say, hey, these two already matched. There was already those transactions within the QuickBooks. So that's important in regards to, you can always code the transactions. We also have clients that don't ever do anything in expense and sales. They just code everything and create records from this as it happens. They just say, my bank statement is my financial statement, but this process here allows you to easy, make it easy to, to convert it into a profit and loss statement that you can use to, to better your business. So that's kind of a, a high level overview of this. And I wanna point out to you the ad account up top in the, the green right corner, that's where you would have went to get to that previous screen that we we talked about. So that's that's those to get yes to that screen there. And the now if say you have a transaction, so in this bank feed you're going to go and you want to depending on what it is, you're going to select a vendor or a or a customer, and you're going to choose choose it. You're going to select on it, click on it, and then it'll open it up. Then you can say. You can change the category on it and the category will then, you can change it to whatever you want and then you can hit add, add, add the transaction at that point in time. And then that puts it, actually records it into your financial statement. Now, if say you had a transaction that hit that bank feed that, that wasn't recorded and you wanted to go record it and you needed to split it. So part of it was for supplies and such part of it was for job expenses in this example you would you would select you would type in the different amounts and this you would know as the business owner because you had the receipt and you would put in the different amounts and then that would put them into their respective categories in the chart of accounts then you can hit save and add at that point in time but the biggest thing is instead of that screen that we were previously on you would have hit split here and that would take you to this the little screen yes correct So I, I mentioned mentioned a bank transfer and a bank transfer, you go up to the spending plus just kind of like you would in with a bank deposit and you would do select transfer. And the, again, this is checking to savings or savings to checking or checking to, to pay off the credit card. So that's any of those. So, and then when you select that, it will give you this screen here. So. In this scenario, we transferred funds from the checking, transferred it to the savings, and that was a thousand dollars. You could put in a memo if you pay off whatever or to do whatever you wanted to do there. And then you could also and then that shows the balance. You can hit save and close. Again, it has attachment if you wanted to upload the bank receipt or something like that from that. You could add the the trans the the deal there. But other than that, that's pretty it's a pretty simple process in that regard. Reconciling, reconciling is an important thing. Again, what is reconciling? You're gonna do it from the accounts tab and this is making sure that all my transactions that hit the bank are recorded in the, the QuickBooks and then all the transactions that are in the QuickBooks actually eventually clear the bank because if maybe you duplicated one, anything like that. So this, this feature is pretty, pretty easy to use and the next screen will show you. So you, you pick reconciling and then up top, I like to point out summary is the summary of the reconciliations for a specific account where, or all the, all the accounts, I mean, summary is all the accounts. So that would be checking savings all the above and it showed the date that it was last reconciled. History by account will show just the checking accounts and all the reconciliations within that account. So that's kind of the difference there, but it's always, it's nice to know that those are up there to go see see what the, when it was last done, et cetera. The other thing, so you just type in your, your down here. So I'm gonna reconcile my checking. I would do that. I'd hit ending balance. I would hit ending date, and then I'd hit start reconciling. And then 
The next screen will show it. So then this is the screen that will look like when you're reconciling in QuickBooks Online. Again, desktop similar in this. You're gonna make sure that up here you got a difference of $844. So a lot of times it's it'll go really fast and easy and sometimes you gotta go through statement by statement by statement line item and just be like, hey, this one cleared, this one didn't. And then it's always good to look and say, why didn't this one clear at that point in time? Make sure to understand that. But that's that's where that is. You just check them off on the side as you go. And then as they clear, if they cleared the bank statement, and then you would get the difference to zero. And then you're at that point in time, you're done with your reconciliation. So that's kind of the reconciliation process in a in a nutshell. Last. One of the last things I wanted to touch base on today was the reports. And I think, again, as you get started in QuickBooks, it's important to know what you're doing with all the, I mean, you, you do all this these transactions, you do sales, you do expenses, you do reconcile, and you say, well, what, is, what did I even get out of that? Well, it's important to just maybe go look at your reports every once in a while and go look and say, the balance sheet, what has it got in it? The profit and loss, exactly got sales, you got expenses, why is sales so high this month? Or why is sales so low? Can we replicate this? Can we do change that? So that's kind of where, where that is. I also like the, the statement of cash flows. I think it, it's important because it'll show you where, where did the cash come from? Am I, am I borrowing to generate cash or am I creating sales and it's create cash? And then the other thing with the statement of cash flows is where is this cash going? Am I buying new machinery or am I it kind of gives you a high level overview of that. Now the, the last two accounts receivable aging and accounts payable aging, those are both important to look at and say, why hasn't this customer paid me? Or why haven't I paid this customer? Or maybe you use those to find the error and you say, I had a, I know I collected this customer's, why is it still outstanding? Well, I maybe I messed up on my receiving process when I received that invoice. So that's kind of the reports in a, in a to in a high level basis, there's there's a lot that you can do in these, but that kind of gives you a rundown on some of the important ones. Now I'm going to show you how to how to get into the report. So on the left hand side, you have reports, and then you would just select whatever you want to pick. And you can also note that you can do custom reports, management reports, all above in that regards there. And you can customize them, you can change them, and I'll show you in the next screen a little bit about customization of these. So this customization here, so you can select the time period, you can select if you wanted to compare another period, you can do dates, you can do a one week if you wanted to, you can do all sorts of stuff there, then you just hit run report. And this is similar, the same concept and desktop version is online. And you can run report and then you get, Get, it'll show you a report that, that shows you whatever you were looking for. So it's kind of, it's, it's useful, it's interesting. So that, that kind of ties up reports. The other, I just want to kind of touch base on some of the other features before, before we wind down the presentation in QuickBooks. There's payroll features. Now in both desktop and online, this is an additional add-on cost, but you can direct deposit checks to employees. You can do quarterly filings through there. You can do annual filings through there, your W-2s, all that stuff. There's a contractor's feature that shows 1099s or helps you file and prepare 1099s. So again, that's a good reason to, to be specific in your vendors and say, this this vendor is 1099 eligible or at that point in time, you can it makes that process go easier. Projects, this is say, this landscaping company, they want to track, they're going to do work for people's houses and they want to, they're going to revamp, put a whole new landscaping system in. Well, maybe they want to track all the, the expenses for that, that company or that job through that. So they would put all the income and expense. You can tie that into to the project. Taxes, that's a way to track sales tax. Inventory, this is a, a good feature if you're a heavy, heavy inventory type of business where you have maybe your retail or this landscaping company, maybe they want to track the trees and the bricks and all the stuff they have in their, in their yard. So locations and classes that there's locations would be separate balance sheet for 
each location. So maybe the landscaping company has a office in Laramie, an office in Cheyenne, and they want to have different locations. They want to differentiate that. That'd be an option. Or maybe they want to, with their balance sheet, you can do that. Classes, you could split out the income and the expense at that point in time. Or the profit and loss side of that at that point in time is split and then the, it's the, the same balance sheet. Sorry, I messed up telling you guys that. So I would like to say thank you guys. Sorry, it was a I know it was a lot of a lot of information in a short amount of time. Please please reach out with any questions and and thanks again for having me as a guest speaker today. All right, thanks so much, Cade. So while you guys are thinking about your questions and entering those in your um, control panel on the right hand side of your screen under either the questions tab or even the chat box, um, I just want to cover really quickly. Uh, our funding sponsors, which you know we wouldn't it wouldn't be possible for us to put on these types of trainings and and webinars without these people. So a big thanks to the Wyoming Business Council and the Wyoming Women's Foundation, of course, the u s. Small Business Administration, and then we also have a funding partner in AARP Foundation. And so I'll turn it back over to Waldo, our moderator, for any questions that came in. Carmen had one question. Uh, she says, banks are providing more online management functions. Does anyone think or know if any banks have this level of services in their online offerings? I know banks uh, offer quite a bit of services, bill paying and that sort of thing. Uh, I don't think you can differentiate your experience billings, your expenses, quite like you can in QuickBooks. The nice thing about QuickBooks and interfacing with banks, you can upload your statements into QuickBooks to make reconciling easier. And then you can go in and categorize them at that time if you haven't done it previously. Uh, anything you want to add to that, Cade? I, I, we have a, a client that uses a, a bank, bank feed feature or their bill pay feature, but at that point in time, it, I mean, it's a bank statement still and not a financial statement. So we have to turn it into a financial statement for them that they can use. So I guess I think that, yes, banks do that, but I don't think they really give you a profit and loss statement and say, hey, this is where you spent your money at at the end of the day. Yeah, I think there's some credit card companies that, you know, um, when they're offering credit card processing services, uh, for example, like Square. Um, they're trying to offer more and more processing features. So for example, um, you can process your credit card through Square and then they also offer a Square register where you can actually enter in your you know, products and run some reports on your sales you know, from Square. Um, but just like Cade said, while it has that front end maybe revenue feature, it doesn't have the back, back end expense. And so you can't get a full income statement or profit and loss statement from that. So it's possible that that banks will start to integrate, you know, more accounting type features. Um, but right now, you actually need a separate software in order to run that. And QuickBooks isn't the only option, right? There's lots of different accounting softwares out there. It just happens to be one of the most popular and one that's um, I would think the most developed because it's been around the longest <laughs> or close to the longest. Would you agree with that, Cade? Yep. And I like QuickBooks Online. I know there's another one out there, Zero, and mm -hmm. it's it's kind of a similar thing. But I I know that QuickBooks QuickBooks is just more. I think it's really user friendly too, just because it has been around for long enough. Of course, accountants always think it's user friendly. <laughs> For those of us that don't speak accountant, I'm not so sure all the time. All right. Any other questions, Waldo? No, I don't have any others that have come in. Because we're so thorough. Absolutely. All right, Waldo, I'll let, I'll let you go ahead and wrap it up with our contact information and our next event. Okay. We want to thank everyone for joining us. And reminder that this webinar has been uh, recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. So if you'd like to go back and review it again, to look at one section a little closer, uh, that will be available to you. Our next webinar is scheduled for Thursday, June 20th from noon until 1 p.m. Uh, it will be titled How to Manage Seasonality in Your Business Like a Pro. And uh, 
I don't matter. I don't know what business you might be in, but it seems like all businesses have some seasonality. So I would encourage you to check that out. Look for the emails to come out uh, to register for this. And if you have any additional questions or need further assistance, please feel free to contact us. Our business counseling is free and we would be, we would be happy to assist you at any time. So once again, please take time to complete the survey that will launch in a few seconds. We do read these surveys and your feedback is important and appreciated. Have a good day, everyone, and we'll see you next time.